companies of the religion of Islam is the fact that you can read Muslim sources to Muslims and get called an Islamophobe. Now, I don't buy into the word Islamophobe for a second. It's a word used by scared, thin-skinned, sensitive people who try to leverage cultural Marxism to silence opposition that they don't like. Put another way, when I hear Islamophobe, I actually hear this. But back to the irony. Read Islam sources to Muslims, get called an Islamophobe. Let's look at perhaps the most obvious example. Many Muslims criticize Islamophobes for saying that 50-something-year-old Muhammad married a six-year-old girl and, of course, consummated the marriage with her when she was nine. Let's add another Islamophobic fun fact to the mix. In addition to her very young age, Muhammad's child bride is repeatedly described as a young, immature girl in the Hadith. Some Muslims dislike these Islamophobic fun facts found in Islamophobic Islamic sources and make two responses. Dude, that was way back then. Everyone was doing it. So why should the best example for all time have done anything differently, Islamophobe? To this, one could simply respond, because Muhammad was supposed to be the best example for all time, including now, when the overwhelming majority of civilized people condemn intimate relationships between young girls and wrinkly old men. This leads us to a second response, science. Muhammad totally didn't actually do that to young Aisha, you Islamophobe. All of the authentic hadith that say he did are inauthentic because we don't like what they say. It's called hadith science for a reason. Also, this is not ad hoc at all. Embarrassment averted. Problem solved. The humiliation brought about by Muhammad's lack of discretion is brought to an end. But there's just one problem. According to Surah Islamophobe verse 4, the Quran itself permits prepubescent sex with young girls. A waiting period for divorce means that the marriage has been consummated. In prior videos, I have shown a list of Arabic commentaries compiled with the help of Blackjack, which affirms over and over and over in one Islamophobic Muslim commentary after another that Surah 65 4 permits consummating marriage with prepubescent girls. You can get that free resource from the pinned comment of my most recent videos to get the most recent revision. But don't read those Muslim commentaries to Muslims. Otherwise, you'll be called an Islamophobe. Salaamu Alaikum, Mahi Mahi Barakuda. Brothers and sisters, we all know that the biggest challenge facing the Muslim world today is Islamophobia. All we want to do is wage jihad, impose Sharia law on the entire earth, subjugate and humiliate those Jews and Christians and strike the necks of the disbelievers. And we want to do this peacefully without having to fear Islamophobia. There's only one thing that can fight Islamophobia and that is truth. That's why I encourage you to get all of your information about the religion of Al-Islam from the YouTube channel Islam Critiqued. Go there, like, subscribe, comment, support, and let's fight Islamophobia together. So how can we overcome this barrier in communication where reading the Quran, Hadith, and Muslim commentaries results in Islamophobic conclusions? Recently it occurred to me there is a solution. Just add another safety barrier. Let's return to the topic of an old man and a very, very young girl with extra safety measures in place. I'm not going to read the Quran myself. I also won't read the Hadith. I also won't read the classical commentaries, lest I be led to an Islamophobic conclusion. Rather, I'll read what modern Muslim scholars say about earlier Muslim scholars who are commenting on earlier Muslim sources. Now we have a safe space to re-examine the Quran. Back to Surah Islamophobe, verse 4, which gives the requirements for divorcing women who have not yet menstruated. Keep in mind that according to verse 5, this is the command of Allah. The study Quran reads, It is reported that the companion, Ubay ibn Kab, said to the Prophet, People say there are women regarding whom nothing was mentioned in the Quran, the young and those who are pregnant. Then this verse was revealed, citing Ibn Kathir, Al-Qurtabi, and Al-Wahidi. As the three courses, referring to Surah 2, for women who no longer menstruate or who have not yet begun to menstruate cannot be determined 
there to wait three months until the divorce is complete. Let's look at this quote again, with emphasis added. In spite of the additional safety precautions provided by the study Quran to help guard against Islamophobia, we are led to the same Islamophobic conclusion. The Quran is talking about divorcing young girls who have not yet begun to menstruate, with whom the marriage has been consummated. Is this verse talking specifically about girls who have a medical condition, as Muslim apologists so creatively suggest? No, it's talking about girls who are too young. That's why it says young. See it? Young. Young, young, young. Young girls who have not yet begun to menstruate. Muhammad's embarrassing actions with Aisha are therefore both approved of and overshadowed. Since far from being a product of its time, prepubescent sexual intercourse is permitted by Allah himself. This raises the problem of prepubescent sexual intercourse in Islam to a whole new level. Or perhaps Allah, like Muhammad, was just a product of his time, allowing Muslim men to do what was supposedly normal to young girls. I normally don't like to repeat myself in these videos, it makes them longer, and you can go back and watch it again if you want, but we have some really hard-headed people watching this channel, so bear with me for a couple of seconds. Young. It says the young. The young, 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 who have not yet begun to menstruate. That's not me reading the Quran or Hadith or commentaries. Those are Muslims reading Muslim sources. And guess what? They still say the same thing. Again, this is according to modern Muslim scholars who are reading and interpreting other Muslim scholars with the stated purpose of guiding today's readers, like me. This is just one example of a supposedly Islamophobic conclusion being explicitly tested to in Muslim sources and confirmed by modern Muslim scholars. Many more examples, of course, of Islamophobic content in Muslim sources could be produced. In summary, Muslims, when you hear troublings from your texts, don't pull the Islamophobe card. You won't be taken seriously by thinking people. Just be honest. The problem is with your sources, not the people who read them to you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.